know that in this world, diverse kinds of living organisms occur. Since the last two to three centuries, scientists have tried to arrange this huge diversity of life under some formal classification systems. The scientific field of study that deals with the classification of biodiversity is known as taxonomy. Historically, the plant taxonomists have classified the diverse kinds of plants under different taxonomic categories, the most common being the family. At present, more than 500 families are recognized in plants all over the world. The Ranunculaceae is commonly known as crowfoot family because the leaves of Ranunculus are similar to the foot of crow or sometimes it is also known as buttercup family because the corolla in Ranunculus looks like a buttercup. The Ranunculaceae as a family was first established by a French botanist D. Jisu in 1789 in his book Genera Plantaire. The family Ranunculaceae is distinct in having following characters, mostly in its flower. Number first, it has spirally arranged perianth parts. That is, sepals and petals are spirally arranged. Number second, distinct character is that it has numerous stamens. And the third one is that it is having an apocorpus gynosium. So we are going to start the description of this family, Ranunculaceae, starting from its habit. It is mostly annual or perennial in its life cycle, and usually these are herbaceous. But some of the members in Ranunculaceae, they are woody climbers, as is true for a genus called as Clematis or sometimes it can be a shrub, as is the Xantho Riza. Coming to the second part, that is root. It's a tap root system, which is always branched, or sometimes it can be tuberous as well. Then the third part, that is the sitem, it is aerial, erect, and smooth surfaced. Its sitem is scattered, or it has having several rings of vascular bundles. Here's on the system, they are simple. Now the leaves, the leaves are both colline as well as ramal. They are usually arranged in an alternate fashion with a spiral arrangement. But there is an exception in Clematis where the leaves are opposite. This Ranunculaceae is unique in having no citipules, that means it is called as exstipulate. The leaves here are petiolate, that means they have a stalk. All the leaves in Ranunculaceae, they have a stalk. The leaves here are usually simple, I mean most often simple, but it is compound in one genus called as Kilimats. Now the leaf lamina, or sometimes we call it as leaf blade, it is undivided in keltha, but most often it is divided, or it is lobed. In the case of type genus Ranunculus, it is palmately lobed. Each lobe is ovate, ovate in its shape, the margins are here entire, and the apex, that is the tip, it is obtuse, and mostly glabrous, that is it is having no heels. Inflorescence is basically an aggregation of flowers. Usually we have here a dichasial sign, but in some cases it is solitary also, as is true for any moon. Or it can be raceme also in case of delphinium. Now coming to the actual flower, individual flower. Flowers here are bracteate, bracteolate, and pedicillate. Pedicillate means that all the flowers, they have a stalk. The flowers here are mostly bisexual. That means both male and female parts are born on the same flower. But there is an exception in case of thalictrum where it is unisexual. 
That means you have separate male and female flowers. Usually the flower here is actinomorphic. That means at whatever plan you try to cut it, it separates into two equal halves. But here again, here is an exception in case of delphinium where it is zygomorphic. The flower here is pentamerous. That means all the flower parts, they are in five or multiples of five. The flower here is also hypogynous. That means the ovary here is superior. Now, coming to the individual flower parts, starting from the outer world, what we call as calyx. Calyx is comprised of the sepals here. The sepals are five, five in number. They are polysepalous, that means free. They are not fused. They are slightly petaloid. That means their color is more like a petal. Sometimes these sepals, they are modified into a supper at base. At the base of each petal, sepal, it is, there is a modification, what we call a supper. This supper is one in number in delphinium, but all the sepals in aquilegia, they are supple. That means five in case of aquilegia. Now coming to the second part, that is corolla. Corolla we know is comprised of the petalous colored organs. Petalous here are again five. As I mentioned that flowers here are pentamerous, petals are five. There is one exception that is heliborus, where it is they are indefinite. Many petals are present. Again, as was the case in case of sepals, it was polysepalous. Here again, it is polypetalous. All the petals they are free; they are not fused to each other. One important feature about Ranunculaceae is that here the nectaries they are at the base of petals. These petals are just like stem node-like petals. Now coming to the reproductive part, starting with androsium. Androsium is the male part in the flower. It is comprised of the stamens. Stamens are here indefinite, that means numerous in number. They are apostemonous, polyandrous, again free, poly means free, spirally arranged. Spiral arrangement, as I mentioned at the outset that they have a spiral arrangement of their flower parts. This is very unique to the ranunculaceae. The stamens, androsium, it is also comprised of stamens, then you have filaments. Filaments here are too long. And thirds here, at the top of the stamens, they are dithecus, extros, and the dehiscence here is longitudinal. Coming to the female part of the flower, that is gynoecium, it is polycorpulary. That means free corpus here. Apocorpus, and at the base of the gynoecium, you have the ovary that is superior. It is unilocular, and its style is just one. And stigma is simple one, and one in number. Coming to its placentation, it's mostly basal, or it can be marginal sometimes, or rarely it can be exile. Exile is uh, placentation in case of ranunculaceae in the genus, what we call as Nigella. Coming to the actual part, uh, ultimately the fruit. Fruit, usually here it is akin, as is the case in the type genus that is ranunculus. In some cases, it is also ha having a follicle type of fruit as we have in case of delphinium. Or it can be berry in case of actea. Or rarely it can be a capsule. For example, in case of nigella. Seed, inside the fruit we have seeds. Seed is here with a small embryo. And endosperm is present here. Coming to the pollination system. Because we have here a wide range of flower structures in the case of ranunculaceae flowers. That's why it is associated with a diverse array of pollination syndromes. Most of the species in the case of ranunculaceae, they are insect pollinated. That means their pollination is brought about by insects. Although there are some species like thylactrum, which are wind pollinated. That means their pollination is anemophily. There are two more genus. One is Calimatus and another is Anemoon, which do not produce nectar. That's why they are pollinated by pollen gathering insects. That means these insects, they are not feeding on nectar, but they feed on pollen. And in that chance, they pollinate the flowers of climates and anemone. In the case of ranunculus, delphinium, or you have the case of equilegia. You have here the modified nectar secreting petals. Those petals which secrete nectar. These petals, they are sometimes spurred. The flowers in the case of these general like ranunculus delphinium and aquilegia, they are visited by nectar gathering insects, not pollen gathering insects, as was the case in the case of previous animal. Mainly, 
that insects that pollinate these flowers are bees or sometimes hummingbirds. In the case of Keltha, there are nectar glands at the base of the corpus. Corpus are the female part of the flower. And here also the flowers are bee pollinated. A typical co-evolutionary relationship is shown by a flower called as European globe flower. The flower is exclusively pollinated by the flies of genus Casiochiti, which enter the spherical flowers to mate and feed on the pollen and nectar. The females then lay their eggs, usually one egg per flower, and the larvae, they feed on the developing seeds. After pollination, let us now discuss the fruit dispersal in ranunculaceae. Dispersal mechanisms in ranunculaceae, they vary widely. The achenes, that the fruits of clematis, they have persistent, long, and hairy styles. These hairy styles aid the flower fruit in the, its wind dispersal. That means fruits are here dispersed by wind. In the case of type genus ranunculus, achenes have some modified features, what we call as tubercles, or sometimes hooked spines. Because of these spines, they get attached to the animals, and by this mechanism, they are dispersed by the animals. Fruits, in the case of Actia, they are berries. They are mainly dispersed by birds. That means birds are here the dispersal agents. In the case of follicular species, those species wherein we have the fruit as follicle, therein the seeds are too small, and they may get dispersed by wind or water. And some, for example, Heliborus, they are secondarily dispersed by ants. Various authors, taxonomists have classified ranunculaceae under different schemes of classification. Let us have a discussion on few of these classification systems. Now first, starting with Bentham and Hooker, the two British botanists, they classified ranunculaceae under the class Dicotyledons, subclass, polypetaly, series, thalamiflori, and the order Ranades. Now, the classification of Arthur Conquist, who was an American taxonomist working at the New York Botanical Garden. He classified Ranunculaceae under the division Magnoliophyta, class, Magnoliopsida, subclass, Magnolidae, and the order Ranunculales. Armand Takhtajan, famous Russian taxonomist, classified it under the division, again, Magnoliophyta, class, Magnoliopsida, subclass, Ranunculidae, superorder, Ranunculini, order, Ranunculales. Dahlgren, a Danish botanist, classified it under the class, Magnoliopsida, subclass, Magnolidae, superorder, Ranunculini, and the order, Ranunculales. Robert Thorne, an American taxonomist, again classified it under the class Angiosperm, subclass Ranunculidae, superorder Ranunculini, order Ranunculales. Lastly, and more recently, the Angiosperm phylogeny group third, which is basically a collaborative group of taxonomists, which is being led by Peter Stevens of Missouri Botanical Garden, they classify it under a class what we call as Eudicots true dicots, and then they recognize he, here a superorder Ranunculini, under the order Ranunculates. <music> Cladistic analysis based on both morphological and molecular data have supported the monophyletic origin of the family. A genus by the name of Hydrastis, with trimerous parient, that means the parient is present in three or multiples of three. Number second character, that is vessels with scalariform perforations. Third character, ovule with two integuments and fleshy follicles. This genus, Hadrastis, occupies because of these characters a unique position, along with one more genus called as Glacidium. All these uh, morphological data is also supported by molecular data. Both these genera whether it is Hadrastis or Glacidium, were recognized as distinct families. 
addressed DC and glass DAC by Taktajan in, in the year 1997. Then came Thorin in 2003. He recognized glass DC under Puniel's, one more different order, but retains address DC near Ranunculaceae under the order Ranunculades. However, more recent studies based on chloroplast DNA, they suggest that these two genera, Hadrastis and Glacidium, they be placed under a subfamily under the family Ranunculaceae Thalictroidae because they believe that it forms a basal paraphyletic group and therefore justifies their retention within the family Ranunculaceae. These basal genera, whether it is Hadrastis or Glacidium, have retained some of the plesiomorphies. Plesiomorphies means ancestral shared characters, those characters which are ancestral in evolutionary term but they are being shared by the recent taxa. Such as these characters, these plesiomorphies are like presence of berberine. One more character that is yellow creeping rhizome, thin walled hairs, smaller chromosomes. Thus, all these characters, they relate them to the berberidaceae, one more different family. The remaining genera of Ranunculaceae, it is believed that they may form a clade, a separate clade, based on the characters like their vessels have simple perforations, they are not trimerous, they are tetra or pentamerous, and they have not fleshy fruits, they have dry fruits. A large subclade by the name of Ranunculidae is supported by the syn apomorphies of characters like longer stomata, larger chromosomes, chromosome number of 8 and nucleotide characters. Furthermore, the reduction in the number of ovules per couple and the evolution of echines have occurred several times within the family Ranunculaceae. Petaloid staminides also have evolved more than once as suggested by their differing morphology. Woodiness in the Ranunculaceae family is believed to have evolved secondarily. The separation of follicle bearing genera, that means those genera which have their fruits as follicles, under the family Helleboraceae by the author Hutchinson is being rejected. Recently it has been rejected by the evidence from floral anatomy and nucleotide sequence data. Thorin in 2003 divided the family into three subfamilies. Number first, Coptidoidae, number second, Isopyridae and Ranunculidae. And Josephine phylogeny group in the year 2003 has recognized two more subfamilies. That means in addition to the previous three subfamilies, they have added two more subfamilies. These are Hadrastidoidae and Glacidoidae. Thus, in all, they have recognized five subfamilies in the family Ranunculaceae. Coming to the fossil record, fossils of fruits, pollens, seeds and leaves are known from several dozen locations. The fossil record begins in the early Cretaceous and it continues throughout the tertiary period. In most of the cases, the fossils are assigned to the presently existing genera, extant genera, and they show a close relationship to particular extant genus. Members of this family, they show a worldwide distribution. Ranunculaceae family members are growing all over the world. But they are especially characteristic. Their main centers of diversity are in the temperate and boreal regions of the northern hemisphere of the world. The family is represented by about 60 genera. With about these 60 genera, they have about 2,500 species. That means reasonably a species rich family. Some of the species rich genera in this family are Starting with the type genus that is Ranunculus, it has around about 400 species. Then coming to the Aconitum, Climats and Delphinium, each of these three, they have around about 250 species. Then the Anemone, it's also a species rich genera having 150 species. The members of the Ranunculaceae family, they are used widely, be that ornamentals, be that medicinal plants, or for vegetables. 
Many ranunculaceae family genera, they are used as medicinal plants because of their alkaloids and glycosides. Some are also poisonous, highly poisonous plants. And many members of the ranunculaceae, they are obnoxious weeds. We know some of the commonly grown ornamentals in this family are Loxper, scientifically known as Delphinium, Columbine, scientifically known as Equilegia, or the buttercup, common buttercup, what is scientifically known as Ranunculus. Or we have the Helibor, or Heliborus. We have few more plants under the family Ranunculaceae, which are being cultivated as ornamentals, like Windflower. In its scientific name is any moon. We have also bandberry with the scientific name Actia. Or we have the Kalimats, a climber, a woody climber. Its uh, common name is Virgin's Bower. Or we have a flower like called as Globe Flower. Its scientific name is Trollis. Or we have a beautiful flower of Meadow Rue, scientifically known as Thalictra. Or Medicinally important plant, Aconitum, it is also sometimes used as, as an ornamental, commonly known as monk's hood. As I mentioned that many of the species of Aconitum, they are used as medicinal. One of the species by the name of Aconitum napellus, it yields a phytochemical by the name of Aconite. One more species of Aconitum by the name of Aconitum pyrox is a source of big poison. These uh, ranunculaceae genera, they are used for many medicinal purposes, like the roots of hydrastis, they are used for stomach ailments. One more uh, use of uh, ranunculaceae is that in the case of species, Nigella steva, its seeds are used as a spice. We commonly commercially know this spice as Kalunji.